So what should I do with these catch-alls, these homemade, handmade caddies that most of the time people use to carry tools or things back and forth from their farm instead of buying a toolbox? So love the handle on this one. Now, y'all, I have to admit that I've had these since last year. I tried to sell two of them. I thought people would like them as is, but apparently not. So it's time to get them made over. I love that people used what they had. So you can tell that this was probably a broom handle on the top of this one. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Yvonne and you are on Ginger Chick Rehab where I love to take pre-loved found items and make them over for you. And so in today's video, I've had these cubby boxes, these old tool boxes that were made for like carrying your tools around basically and they're always wonderful decor pieces now i had a few that didn't sell last year because i left them as is so i thought okay it's time to paint them up it's the season people are starting to decorate for spring inside and out so let me share the process with you of what i did to these items to hopefully get them to sell now so we're kind of going to be working on these all at the same time. So I just thought I would share a close-up view. I love the salvaged wood. Oh, that green patina is awesome. I thought, well, this one, I th think when I found it, it was used in a horse barn. And then this one may have been a shop project. Who knows? But I love the handle on it. Now, this is the only one I did not try to sell last year. I thought I knew that this one needed made over. You just sometimes have to sit stuff in your stash until you find inspiration. It had a lot of writing. Apparently, they needed a pencil and a paper inside the toolbox. <laughs> but I love that green patina and the fun of a broom handle. So I'm just going to go ahead and get it wiped down with some Dawn dish soap, some hot water. Oh yes, the broom handle still had a price tag on it, so I'll go ahead and get that scraped off also. The broom handle is super shiny. It's very slick, so I'm just going to take some 150 sandpaper and I'm just going to sand it so I, when I paint it, my paint has something to grip onto. The other two, because I tried to sell them already last year, were already cleaned up, but they've been sitting around you know, for a season at least. So I thought I might as well go ahead and wipe them down one more time. And you know, I'm not painting over this rusty crusty detail. Oh my gosh, look at that beauty. Now last year, I was not using Sweet Pickens milk paint. So some things are Godwings moments to wait until you find a project that will be perfect for this job. And I think to make a chippy crackling paint job on these old tool ca caddies will be perfect. So I'm actually looking for a blue color, like an underneath color on top of the green color that has another blue color, that chippy salvaged wood um, that's not chippy enough. So I'm mixing ocean and birdie together to create my own blue. So if you've not used Sweet Pickens Milk Paint, it is equal parts powder to equal parts water. You stir it for two minutes and then you sit it off to the side until it thickens for about two to 10 minutes. And since I'm gonna be working on all three caddies at the same time and I need to let my milk paint sit to thicken, I'm gonna go ahead and mix up every color that I think I'm gonna use. So on the one tool caddy that was used in the horse barn, I think I'm just gonna paint it this old olive color still looking for the chippiness so I'm still going for the sweet pickens milk paint same process of mixing it up like I said we just need to let them sit off to the side a little bit to thicken it up so there's no problem with making your paint ahead well not too far ahead but just enough time that when you're done painting one you can move on to your next paint a lot of times when I'm doing these projects I'm showing you how I'm mixing the milk paint up before each individual product project but I thought, why don't I share with you the real world of what I'm really doing. If I'm doing three objects, I know what the colors I'm using, and I know that I need to let my paint thicken up. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to get it mixed up so it has that sit time. And then in between, when I'm painting coats, I put my, my paintbrush in a baggie. I put my milk paint that's in the cup inside of a Ziploc bag so that it stays and it doesn't harden. Now I'm taking some candle wax, 
just plain old votive candle wax from the Dollar Tree store. I thrifted a whole bunch one time and I'm still working working on them. So now the candle wax, I'm rubbing all over the caddy. I'm not painting the inside or the bottom or anything. I'm just painting the outside of the caddy. Just simple, something super simple. But I don't want it to be complete coverage. I'm looking for that chippy look. So what the candle wax is going to do is going to prevent my paint from sticking here and there. So now I'm going to go ahead and just do splotches of my Birdie Ocean mixture. I'm not covering. I just want to see like, as you can see underneath the green, you see a lighter blue on this wood. I thought that would be really pretty because my finished coat is going to be the flower sack color. But I just want to see some splotches of blue. So just randomly putting blue here and there. Now while my Ocean Birdie mixture is drying, I'm going to go to the other cubby that I believe was from a horse barn <laughs> and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to rub it with candle wax because I don't want it to have complete coverage. And I'm definitely not going to be painting that rusty crusty edge on that. Oh, just love it. Maybe it was a little too dirty. It's so hard to know. You have to have that right person come along that's looking for like this would have been a project piece or maybe they wanted to use it as is. Or I guess maybe people want it to be painted in more of a decor piece. Sticking with the age of the wood is why I'm going for that chippy, savaged look. Just like that previous one that I was painted on top of, I was kind of trying to match up what I thought the green would. And I thought, you know, I can make, you can mix and match the colors all you want, but I thought that this old olive color was pretty darn close. So I'm just going to very gingerly go against that rusty, crusty detail and then just put my paint on. Now, I love these brushes. I get them from the Painted Heirloom, y'all. And the thing I like them is they clean up very easy. They don't hold a lot of paint, so I'm not always worrying about drips or runs. I put minimal paint on my brushes. And the nice thing about doing a waxing technique is you're not having to look for total full coverage. So is this video a little bit repetitive? Yeah, I think it is, but I'm hoping to give anybody an idea that finds these when they're out and about. It is now here in Michigan starting to be garage sale season. You find these a lot in, I find them anyway, in old barns. A lot of times when there's an estate sale or an auction, they will have tools in it. And Chris gets the tools and then I get the cubby boxes. So if you are new to our channel, we have another channel called The Journey Channel where you can see the behind the scenes of what we find at auction. A little bit of the auction and how I decorate with auction find along with my husband Chris where if you're wondering what kind of tools come in there, take a peek.
And talking about barns, oh, red wagon has to be my go-to when it comes to red to look like that salvaged barn wood find. So that's what I'm going for here. I'm going for a salvaged look. These are old cubbies. A lot of times people just made them out of whatever they had wood they had laying around. Even though I think this one's a newer, a newer shop project type of piece, but I still want to give it that chippy aged look. I needed to switch over to this long handled fan brush only because my hand was in the way with this shorter brush. They still have great control. I love these little fan brushes that I get off of Amazon. Because I wanted to take my time and I needed to set this off to the side to work around that rusty crusty detail, I now that the other side has dried, I can flip it over and I can do the other side. Just all depends on how you can paint something, what you need to do to each piece. Visually, sitting it off to the side on its side was easier for me to do than standing it up and trying to get that nice crisp line. For this one, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do one more layer of wax over on top over the entire thing, whatever, like, whatever. You know, I want it to be chippy at its best. You just never know. I love milk paint because it chips or and it crackles and it crazes. It's unpredictable, so you just kind of have to take what you can get. So now on the top of this, we're doing a flower sack, and I'm doing a flower sack over the entire painted area. Like I said, I'm not painting the bottom, I'm not painting the inside, so we're going to hope for the best. I'm sure you can tell with my messiness here that I am putting the white, the flower sack on a little bit heavier. I can smooth it out at the end, but I really want to get a thicker coat. I think this should be just a one coat coverage and then I can smooth out the brush strokes once I get it all on. So not that I'm telling you to peace out, but I am telling you that this is my second coat. Yes, one coat looks good. It covered really nice, but to really get that chippiness and get the paint layering and chipping off, two coats is really, it's really necessary. So along with the oh, olive, but we're going to go ahead with that second coat too. Now that my paint is dry, I haven't chipped anything off, I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit of wording to this box. Since it has that fun handle, it's newer, it has a little, like a little cubbies where you can stick some gardening tools. I thought it would be really sweet to just use this plants, bulbs, and seeds from the Funky Junk stencil. It's always nice to just use pieces and parts and not, not to go crazy and like doing the whole thing or anything. Just a little bit of wording I thought would be sweet. So now it's time to chip off the paint. So I just have a scraping tool. It's kind of like the Cricut scraping tool. You can now get these at the Dollar Tree store. So whatever waxed and adhered, 
is now going to be removed. That's why I wanted to do the stenciling first because I wanted it to look like it has been worn with time, not that it had been added on after it was worn with time. So. If I didn't necessarily get all the chipping that I want, and I want to give the edges a little bit more of a war look, just take some sand tape paper. I'm just using some 220 sandpaper and just giving it a little bit more worn look. Now you do need to seal your milk paint in. And I'm going to go and richen up my <laughs> red wagon using some of the Jolie's Black Wax. That's really going to give it that age. I love how it deepens it. And it really gives it that true salvaged red barn look. I feel anyway. I know it darkened it right up. But that's what's giving it that aged look. is a fun color. I really do love this green. So let's chip this off and see what we got flying. I, I hope you just never know, like I could have done a little bit more candle wax. You could do Vaseline. You could do a crackling um, product. All depends on what the effect that you're looking. I was just looking for some chippiness and some age. Oh yes, there is quite a pile after you're doing a chippy technique like this to sweep up. I just take the air compressor, blow the item off to make sure that all my little chippiness and my sanding dust is off the item itself. Now I don't want to change my color at all. I love this color. And another way of sealing milk paint in is to use hemp oil. And this hemp oil is by Sweet Pickens themselves. So perfect to use with the Sweet Pickens milk paint. So because they kind of go together. But yeah, see how all it's doing is just taking that chalky residue and then just giving it a nice top coat. So when you use a hemp oil, you put the hemp oil on, you wait 20 minutes, and then you wipe off the excess. It's not like a wax where you wipe on and then you wipe off. But especially with this being old dry wood, it's really soaking the hemp oil in. <gasps> is that just not some beautiful chippy aged wood? Now for my white, I'm just going to go right to my orbital sander. I'm just going to do a light touch with some 220 sandpaper. I know that that milk paint is on there. I just really want it to distress, and this is a larger piece. So the sandpaper and the orbital sander, as you see, without pushing like a ton of pressure down, isn't taking it all the way down to the wood. Now we know old cubbies like this, if they've been used, they are not that crisp white. So I'm going to use some of the Fusion's Aging Wax, which is a brown dirt, I call it, wax. So this is just going to darken up the white. And I know it's going to be like, oh my gosh, that's way too dark. So I'm just going to go ahead and get it on. And then I can rub it on, rub it in, erase a little bit with some of the Homestead's Natural Clear Wax. So you get it on there first because I want to change that white paint a little bit and age that color. And then I can take the natural and then tone it down. Now, if I didn't want the white color to change, I would do the clear wax first and then the aging wax.
So thank you so much for watching today's video. Yes, I thought, okay, let's just get these painted up. One was already painted, the broom handle. So let's just give it that old time chippy look. I need to be careful like with transfers or doing too much wording on it because sometimes people just want you to see the flowers or the stuff that they're putting into it, what have you, whatever. So sometimes keeping it general just will help it sell. If it doesn't, I guess I can always bring it home and put a transfer and some more wording on it. So let me know down in the comments, do you have any of these tool caddies laying around? Do you use them in your own decor? Because I do. I definitely use them in my own home decor. So let me know down in the comments below. And as always, if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you're new and you're checking out the channel for the first time and you love to go thrifting, you love pre-loved items, you need ideas of what to do to make items over, to add into your own home decor, or maybe you are a reseller or a crafter or a DIYer. <laughs> and if you are, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know we uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys, and you can see what I'm up to. Bye. Mm -hmm.